I will stay long after the session so we can we can continue in question and answers, but I think there will be plenty of time during the session anyway. And before I start, I have something for you. I have a present. That's a typical Czech wine called Frankovka from South Moravia. Red wine, very good, I would say. And what I need for that? One of my another activity is I'm studying MBA and I'm writing a dissertation thesis, and it's on uh, it's actually on agile processes. So I would like to get the answer: how to start agile, what did we learn from starting agile, especially what did you learn from starting agile, and how tight must be agile within the company culture. So I would like to ask you if. Uh, if you can fill this uh, query, I will move it one on this side, second on this side. It's two pages, so please took two papers and write there some name or identification. And in the end of the presentation, I will get it back and pick one person who get this one. <laughs> so. So I don't know if it's for everyone or not. Two pages, it's one query. So yeah, it's four pages altogether. So <coughs> and it has, of course, uh, the online version. So if there is not enough papers, so you can use the online version. And please help me to distribute it to your friends and colleagues. So and now to the introduction. What do a lot of idea company does? They do web solutions. You know, that's something like that. Small internet presentations about some companies. Nothing real special. They would like to do the standard product with low customization. So, for example, if they do uh, issue, it will look completely different, but it will be based on the exactly the same architecture below and using the same blocks. And they would like to have a long-term customer, so their customers should be returning. They would like to have a good um, cooperation with them and know them well, so they can have them for a long time. So it's based on partnership and collaboration. They would like to kind of provide something a little bit more than uh, just a simple web presentation. They believe that the internet is more than web presentation. It's a brand marketing, sales marketing. They have to <laughs> introduce it to the new customers and products. They have to persuade. They have to persuade uh, customers to buy their product. And they have to, of course, keep their existing customers. So, the starting point. Actually, when I came there, it was really, actually horrible. There was a poor project management, almost nothing. There was uh, no time management, they were not able to do anything on time. <coughs> Poor estimation, so whenever they promised you to deliver something, it was never on time. And like delivery. And of course, no customer relationships. They were not really talking to customer. They were like uh, regular developers, which are always complaining that the customer is changing their requirements and changing their mind and not really getting the inputs on time and so on. And they did difficult design because they like to do design. That's uh, their kind of hobby because they believe they are good developers and therefore they should do difficult designs and uh, lot of classes and for every customer to create it from scratch. That's the company. So the person, uh, they have uh, three people, it's a small company. Three people, the th fourth one. That was uh, the investor who, dis who decided to change the company completely. So now there are four of them, but, uh, well, that's about it. 
three people and uh, actually we had to change two of them to make it working. Then, how is it different? It's a uh, short-term project. This project you just uh, saw on the previous slides, the, the regular web presentation could be done in about three days. That was the beginning. That was the promise to the people. Mm -hmm. And the issue, it could be done in about five days. So that was the constraints. And finally, uh, there came the investor and decided to change the company because, uh, just think about it for a second. How many web studios do you know? Would it be hundreds or tens or thousands? Hundreds. Yeah, I think so. It's hundreds of uh, studios and they are, like, actually they are quite the same. At least I think so. They provide a similar services, they are always late, they are always complaining that you put them the wrong inputs and so on. So uh, that person, he was just thinking how to distinguish between those companies and which would be the competitive advantage of this company. So he provided a strict delivery condition and he said that it will be on time or for free. So at, at that time I just came into the company and my aim was to learn them and teach them uh, how to fulfill these uh, conditions. So they must be really on time. There is no excuse, otherwise... otherwise uh, they will not get paid, which is pretty much a uh, strike, it's pretty much uh, problematic, especially in this time. So, what we did and why? I have lots of experiences with Scrum and uh, it always worked for our customers, different teams, different environments, so I started at Scrum. And then I was thinking, how short it makes sense to make a sprint so we are still able to work and it's still efficient. So I choose a uh, half day sprint and that's why. Because when we do the analysis, uh, we found out that the average task could be done in, let's say, two hours. So that's uh, the first thing make your sprint as long so you can uh, finish something and show to the customer. So they are pretty much able to do some visual output in half a day, four hours. Then uh, the web solution is supposed to be done in three days. So we have a six sprints and issued in five days, which is ten sprints. That's, let's say, reasonable. And finally, if you look at the working day, then you can expect that the developers and people who are working on that are going for lunch in between. So they stop to work anyway. So there is not much uh, problem to stop them, let them do something else, do some demo or uh, check the results or whatever. And then after lunch they can continue. And finally, I need to kind of know where they are. I need to really expect the status and know if they are still on time, if they can still do it or not. So in uh, six sprints, if we found out after one and a half day, three sprints, that we are not making the results on time, then we can still hire the external people, we can still call the customers, and tell them, oh, we are very sorry, but uh, we cannot make it. Is it a big problem for you or not? Or uh, we can uh, kind of change it or uh, work overtime or work overnight, which we never did, actually. Anyway, but that's about it. And it must be, of course, low overhead and uh, minimize the overhead, because if I do the a uh, sprint every two hours, which uh, could be possible because the average task is two hours, then the overhead will be really huge, so it doesn't really matter, they will be distracted every two hours from their work, and uh, that I found too short, so 
It's a question to discussion after that if it makes sense to make it even shorter for some conditions or not. I don't think so. Oh. So, we started the half day sprint. And what we did was uh, finally we set up one person who did the pre planning meeting. So he set up, the, or she finally set up the priorities. She is uh, creating the personal priority list and personal backlogs for uh, the people, for the developers, because they are time to time they are working on uh, several projects in parallel because uh, the projects are waiting for customer input, so they cannot continue right away. So we have one person who is maintaining the priority and doing the pre-planning. Then uh, the people itself, they are doing the planning and they are discussing uh, how they distribute the priority list, who will be working for which project and if they help each other or if they will be working in parallel. And uh, finally, we have a stand-up meetings. Actually, we finally decided to have a regular stand-up meetings uh, every half a day, every spring. And uh, because uh, if we stop every hour and discuss what everybody did and if it's still working, it will be too destructive, we believe. So we make it official way just uh, once a sprint, at the beginning of a sprint. But uh, on the other side, uh, they are all sitting in one room and we kind of have some event-driven scrums. So whenever someone has any issue or problem, he is just standing up and saying, okay, can you help me or do you know how to do that? And it's uh, kind of more, uh, it brings more requirements for developers. So they have to be really collaborative and helping each other and cooperating. But for three people, it's working pretty much well, finally. I think the biggest issue, the biggest issue I have was uh, to tell them how to use the points and why. I don't know if you have the same uh, experiences or not, but uh, for me, it's always hard to learn the people why the points are better than the hours or mandates. But finally, I think I succeeded, so we are using just the points. So that's good. We are printing uh, burn-down graphs every, or uh, printing. Uh, we have uh, Google Dots online, so on the Google Dots we have online every half a day, we have a new burn-down, so everybody can uh, see their progress, which is actually quite good. And uh, we have tasks in backlog with the point estimations, and we see the progress online. And every, let's say, month, we have a, a reflection meeting. So the last one we've got uh, about two days ago, and we changed the process a little bit again and improve it. So that's our burn down. It's uh, on Google Doc, as I said. So. I will give you some introduction. What does it mean? The orange line is the best case, which we planned for. The green line is uh, with the buffer, so the worst case. And uh, the blue line is the real reality, actually. So that's uh, where we started. They've been able to make the project even three times longer than they expected, and they never knew why. So it was always something really exceptional which happened to them, and they didn't know why and how to change it, so next time it will be better. So that was the beginning. The difficulties we have during that process was that it was extremely fast, so now, working that half a day sprint, you cannot hide anything. It's um, actually if you just drink a coffee a little bit longer and discuss what you did over the weekend, you can directly see it on a burn down. That's not nice. If you take one day holiday, it's a completely disaster. 
your customers will not receive it. So you have to plan these things really carefully. Or you have to have some backup. In the beginning, we didn't have any backup. In the end, we planned for with a backup, and we have one person who is working uh, for sales and for development, so he can uh, shift his capacity more to development if it's necessary or, or if it's critical. And we are dependent on the customer responses, which is not nice as well because uh, the customer always promised to give us uh, the text for the web or the data which we should uh, put into the issue or the graphics or just say, okay, I like it and then you can continue. So we have to change the plans in a pre-planning pretty fast and uh, pretty often. Therefore, we have one person dedicated to these things and she is changing uh, the plans and the priorities according uh, to the outside world. And we have a strict business model which is uh, kind of a good motivation because um, one of these people is the owner of the company, so he is strictly motivated on the company results, and the other one, other two, these are as well have a quite high moving uh, salary with respect to the company results. So, and it's high risk because uh, if you fail, even for one day, and the customer doesn't really agree, then it's for free. So, that's the result. Again, the same lines. Orange is hidden somewhere here. That's the best case. Green, that's uh, the worst case. And here we are, somewhere in between. But that's pretty much good. I would say that 90% of our projects are now finishing on time. And we are still on a learning curve, so we can still improve and uh, we can still do better. So. I think we can make it. So, the summary what we did. That's the half day sprint. We did a stand up meetings every half a day and including the meetings which are just on demand. So they are gathering on time when they need it. And pre-planning meeting with one dedicated person for the pre-planning and planning, which is for the whole team, distributing the work. We have an early customer communication, and actually we have customer communication, because at the beginning nobody really cared about the customer. So that's an um, incredible improvement. And we have a communication within the team, so they are not really sitting next to each other and working separately, but they are working as a team, helping each other and doing one work, all together. So, in a conclusion, in two months, we've been able to fix the predictability, so we know pretty much for sure when we can do that, when we can deliver the goods, where we can deliver the issue, where, when we can deliver the web presentation. We are delivering on time, Currently, as I said, 90% of our uh, projects are finalizing on time. And we have a high customer satisfaction, so they like it. <coughs> because uh, they can trust if we promise to deliver, we will. And as a side effect of the Simplified design, because we are now really building on the simple blocks and reusing what was already done and uh, not really designing from scratch all the time, we increased our velocity for 30%. So that's pretty much good. Currently the presentation which you saw at the beginning, the simple web, web presentation we can do in one day, including the graphical design and all the data and so on and the e-shop in about three days, so that uh, brings us extra buffer to the customers, so we are not under so big pressure that we will fail to deliver. So, thank you for your attention and I hope you will join me in some questions 
because this was an introduction to the case study and uh, now I would like to know what you are interested in and I can go into the details if you like. I missed the point, but what about retrospective uh, or reflection meetings? Uh, did you mention that? Yeah, if you do the reflection meeting, yeah. we, did, we do. We do the reflection every, uh, every one month, where we discuss uh, what we like on the project, and how the team is sitting, and improving the process, if it was the part of your question. Yeah, yeah. thank you. We do. In the beginning you told that uh, you decided to differentiate your company and uh, uh, if it's late, it's free. So, how successful was the differentiation? Did you really get into some new market? Yeah, actually, uh, at the beginning, uh, when I started there, they've got uh, almost no customers. And it was uh, really, really in a bad shape. They were not able to get the new customers and so on. And currently, we are participating in a... In Czech Republic, uh, there will be an elections, so we've been able to get uh, one of the biggest parties uh, as our customer. So that's one of the well, good things. Great success. Well, customers are anyone else, so they're paying, which is good. that ten percent of your projects are late and therefore they get done for free, as, I, as far as I understood. So well, we not really. Day. We have, uh, as I said, we are thirty percent faster than at the beginning. So we have still, still there thirty percent buffer, so which is not uh, which was not included in the graph. If I move it here. So how many projects you actually given up for free? <laughs> given up for free? Just uh, a few, not really many. Can you repeat the question, please? Ah, sorry. Money. Uh, the question was about money. How many projects did we have to do for free? Because uh, I said that 90% of the projects uh, are successful, so for the 10% they supposed to be for free, but it's not the case really, because we are now 30% faster than at the beginning. Uh, we can still, in most cases, uh, be under this uh, 30%, so it's still working. But a couple of uh, projects we did for free, that's right. But on the other side, it's a uh, long-term uh, cooperation with the customers and they are paying uh, not just for creation of the web page, but as well for uh, some improvements and changes and uh, some other services, so it's not too bad. Yeah, after the sprint is, uh, I will repeat the question first. So we have a half day sprint, so the question is if we do after every sprint customer demo. So we are sending the customer some kind of link to their presentation, so they can see something there. So for example, they can see the graphic and they can see how is it uh, changing and that we really get their information inside, they can log in or whatever else. So Yes, we try to do that uh, at least every other spring, because every half a day it's sometimes not possible. <laughs> I'm just developers burnt out by not drinking coffee at all. <laughs> do you still have some time for relaxation during this? Yeah, period? well, they have, but less than before. <laughs> and they have still some time for, sorry for, uh, I'll repeat it. So uh, the developers still have some time for drinking coffee and for relaxation, but it's not as much as it was before, so they are pretty much working really fast. So yes, yeah. uh, provocative question you mentioned about the time estimates being worse than the story point estimates. Mm -hmm. So why, if the time estimates are so natural? So natural, okay. There's a, a more general question about that I mentioned that uh, I prefer point estimate because I believe they are much better than the time estimates. So the question is why? So. I believe it's about the learning curve. So if you learn, uh, if you ask, the, ask the, the developers how long it will take, and he will tell two hours, he's not really thinking about the time 
he's um, doing some other things like drinking coffee for example or whatever so he almost never can make it in two hours therefore in a classical methodology we have a project manager who is experienced and already knew that if that person says two hours it means four hours and if the other person said two hours it means three hours and so on so therefore we put uh, points in and the points is a relative uh, measurement of the effort so if you have one task which is ten points and then you need to put estimation to the second task then you just compare the effort which is necessary for that and if it's the same you put ten points if it's slightly more you put I don't know 13 points and if it's like really easy you put about three points so that's uh, that's the story about it and with the points um, that's the, the current estimation and if you have already the backlog estimated in the points and then your velocity change it, which means that your team is able to make uh, for example not just 20 points but 15 points, uh, 25 points because they are better and more experienced or whatever, then if you draw a burn down, it will change your future work as well. So it will change uh, your point value, let's say. If you count on hours, it will never change your future. It will, it will just change what's done already. If it was so, may I ask, uh, what is the biggest project managed with this methodology? methodology? The biggest project, <laughs> well, most likely we do the e-shop, which is uh, five days, something okay. like that. Five, six days. Uh, would you use the same approach for like one year project and ten people? Of course not. That's uh, just for the small companies, really fast delivery. For one year project, you have to have a sprint for, I don't know, two weeks. And for ten people, it will get, yeah, something like that. Two to three weeks, for example. Uh, you have a half day uh, sprint, so uh, what was the overhead of uh, making Scrum and uh, preparing the uh, burn down chart and uh, all other things? Uh, and what was the impact uh, at the beginning? At the end, and uh, uh, how it uh, impacts the uh, final um, success of projects. Okay, so the question is uh, what? Uh, the, the sprint is rather small, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, things uh, have to be done formally to uh, prove that uh, the sprint is done and to show uh, okay. the progress. So the the question is about how big was the overhead with uh, all the maintaining of the sprints and creating burnouts and so on. So as I said, we have a pretty much standard product. So we have two things. One is an internet presentation, which has its own burndown and backlog kind of template. And second one is the eShop. Again, it has its own template, burndown and uh, backlog. So at the beginning it was uh, kind of time consuming because we have to create these backlogs and uh, make them really working and according to the situation and so on. But finally, currently now, it doesn't really bring much overhead because we have it on the Google Docs. You just uh, copy it from template and uh, start to fill it. It's pretty much automated so we can see the graphs and uh, that's about it. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, my understanding is correct. The reflection meeting would be some kind of a retrospective that it's uh, done yeah. a few sprints. Yeah. So then if you have problems or improvements, then you will be incorporating that only after a few sprints. So if it's not done for every sprint. Yeah, but uh, actually for our other sprints we are not doing the retrospective every sprint. We always do retrospective uh, every 5 or 6 or even 10 sprints so we can see the changes really in real life because our experience from other projects which are more regular timing like 2 week sprints 
are that you have to try a couple of sprints so you can see the result. The biggest problem that I've had with very short sprints is incorporating the testing cycle. So could you tell me how you incorporate manual testing and how you define done? Well, we have uh, three people there, so they are always trying to test uh, after each other, so the same person is not uh, testing their, his own work. So they are really sending uh, these pieces of a code for testing, so, I mean the results. So, but it's a fast check, it's about a five minutes check if it looks correctly. So it's really, you have to keep in mind that it's really a uh, simple project. It looks all the same, they are using uh, the same blocks and just uh, have a different graphics or, uh, of course, content, but from technical perspective, it's a uh, template, kind of. And uh, how do you think the developers motivated doing the cloning over the months? So they they taking the existing code and the cloning, cloning for new customers. How do you keep them motivated? <laughs> well, they are motivating. Um, I think uh, they like to see the customer to be happy with their product. And they like to see the customer who is returning. And that's actually their business model. To see customer. They have uh, low costs for creating the presentations, for example. But uh, the customer is paying some small amount of money over the year period, and they are doing some small uh, adjustment to their web page according to the CEO or whatever else the customer needs. So it's more about uh, the motivation from the customer relationship now than from the technical perspective. Hmm. Uh, so having, uh, having the screen, uh, you have uh, two pre-planning meetings send out meetings, uh, demos, yes, am I right? Per day. Well, the demos we have mostly every other sprint, so once a day, because uh, we, are, we are just sending a customer the results, so it's like a simple email. Here we can see how we are on it, we are still on time, and you will be still delivered as you expected, so that's a kind of a demo. It's not really a presentation for the customer because uh, uh, I cannot actually imagine a customer who would like to be present every half a day to our demos and see what we did, so that's... So you don't have uh, real-time feedback? Well, not necessarily, but uh, the customers are looking at that, so... Mostly we do. Well, uh, we have, uh, at the beginning, we have quite strict requirement, so we don't really change it much, so. So it's pretty much pretty quite requirements which doesn't change until the end of the network. Mostly doesn't, sometimes does, it depends on the, on the customer and uh, on the project. Sometimes the graphics change, so we change it better. About planning, uh, you have twice a day, yeah. Before every sprint, yeah. Yeah. Before every sprint, we do a planning and we do over planning. But of course, uh, it's all online on Google Docs, so it's done kind of like everybody is checking at the time period, exact time period. If the priorities has not changed, and if not changed, then they plan what they will be doing, and <coughs> it's all done in about five minutes or something. So it's. You know, so three people, so it's but not so difficult. The customer is uh, not present, therefore we have one person dedicated to lead these pre-planning meetings and he is providing the voice of a customer. So normally the customer uh, sets the priorities at the very beginning, yeah? Mm -hmm. At the very first planning yeah, well, when we start to work for a customer, he says what he wants to, and we 
as well agree if there are any time frames or parts where we need to ask for his confirmation. And if there is, for example, he would like to see the graphic or whatever, then uh, we really call him and say, okay, here it is, can you check it? And uh, then after we check it, we call again like, okay, did you like it or should we change it? And if not, we are just sending a simple status like, here we are, still on time. No. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> Thanks. How do you get your customers to be so nice and not change their mind? Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, the guys. They went through some uh, sales training as well. So they learn how to discuss with customer the requirements. And uh, at the beginning, they as well told them that there's a kind of a standard product. So they cannot uh, really want, really uh, expect to have something completely else. They can have different graphics, which means different uh, view, different uh, picture, but they cannot uh, change the really insight which is behind. So, yeah. one of the previous presentations in this same hall, uh, it was said that when you reach a local extremum in your effectiveness or in your, uh, yeah, in the way, in speed, how you do things, there's always another peak which you can reach by abandoning half of your practices, for instance. So how do you see improvement of your situation? Maybe you can head for 60% faster results. So, have you considered abandoning half of your practices to reach even better results? I am not now, but I have to think about it. That's one of the things which I can think out of when I came back home. So. Okay. Yes, actually, uh, I think there are no other questions. So, uh, uh, do... Um, uh, during those st uh, stand-up meetings, uh, is there any um, are there any solutions actually being made uh, as um, as to how how much of this feature will be implemented this time in this uh, sprint, or is it just we take those 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 those? And Most cases is uh, already done. The backlog is uh, pretty much the uh, same for every project. But uh, still, there are some possibilities how to do it differently, so they are discussed. Because some of them, mm. one of the person, he created their internal system, and the other two, they don't really know him, know, know the system. So sometimes they decide to implement some feature because they knew it's uh, known for uh, many customers and it could help them. So in that case, uh, they will do it like on their internal expenses and uh, provide it for customer in longer time, but it's uh, told before. So the customer knew they are creating new functionality for him. And so you have a, a kind of uh, your own CMS. Yeah, we have our own CMS. Mm -hmm. okay. Since you don't have a professional QA uh, and you spend a few time for, for, for testing, have you ever had a production <coughs> and uh, have you ever have a production features? And if yes, uh, was that the reason for those ten percent student success? Well, yes, I would say so, because um, it's quite hard for the developers to be really patient and check the output carefully, so they have to still learn it. So, for example, when they did uh, some web page for me, I found, um, I knew it was not the highest priority, but I found about 10 small issues, like which were different than I expected, different from the original graphical layout. So therefore, we a little bit change the process and we really plan some time for every phase to test 
and we have uh, the final test before we deliver, and uh, it improved. But yes, it's a bit problem. So probably if you add one more team member, which is going to be QA. You yeah, that could help. That could help, yes. But we have to pay that person, which is not really. But no, but maybe it will pay by himself. Maybe yes. So uh, could you name one one major thing that uh, the team learned during these couple of weeks, or was it just integral uh, uh, adaptation to this uh, <coughs> process? If I can name uh, one single thing, uh, which is the most important, which the team had learned during this time. Okay. It's quite a difficult question, actually, to select just the one thing. Uh, I think uh, they learn they have to communicate with the customer and they have to have a relationship with the customer. Because otherwise, all the other practices are fine, but if there is no relation with the customer, it's not working anyway. So the customer must be satisfied in the end. And there are several practices how to do that. One of them is, of course, be on time and do what the customer expects, but you have to talk to him and uh, provide what he wants to, and not what you expect he wants to. And the, the, the team members, every, every one of them can reach the customer? Uh, currently, we have one person who is just internal because we just hire him, so he is learning. So he's uh, kind of uh, away from the customer now because he didn't get all the training. He doesn't know yet how to do that. But uh, the two other people, they are in the front line for the customers. About half a year, maybe a little bit more. for uh, this small web studio because I would find it the same but uh, the people who are working there they don't feel it like that they are fine and what about you well, would you like to stay with this team for a long time or you want to change it and to work with some other project and to group this project ok so the question was if I personally would like to stay with this team for a long time or just change the project so uh, this company is just uh, one of uh, many projects which I have so I keep an eye on them and uh, if, they, if I see something uh, how to improve their process how well so currently I see them once a month or something so it's not uh, really too much and I'm pretty much involved in other projects so that's just a small part of my work and how would the team uh, and how the team accepted this uh, half a day sprint so was it was it easy actually yes it was pretty much easy because well one of them he didn't like it so he left but he didn't uh, really like uh, the company itself. He was one of the owner, and they've got some problems. So, and the other owner, he likes it. And he see that he, their work is improving, and it's more predictable, and that the company is finally, after, I don't know, three months or something, uh, or half a year, they are now back in black numbers and not in red. So that's the best motivation for them. Is there a big possibility with such a small team that if someone leaves, you could then start to disappoint customers while you recruit somebody else and train them up? 
Yeah, that will be great. It's uh, it's maybe given in a way that uh, all the products are so similar and uh, copy from one to another. So you learn it fast, pretty much. So, of course, you have to learn some uh, things like how to deal with a customer, how to communicate. But that's a um, yeah, that's a problem for everyone. So. Okay, so... Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, repeat uh, the previous question. I think that uh, actually the, the biggest problem of the small team is a human uh, factor. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you do if, you know, suddenly somebody left or somebody gets uh, ill, for example? So would you cancel, let's say, one third of customer requests for, for a month or something? Mm -hmm. Or what, hap what happens when uh, people like to go to the vacation or I don't know. Usually everybody likes to do it in summer. Okay, so what we do with uh, if the people are leaving the company or if they have a holiday or whatever. So the holiday they have to plan in France. So we plan for a little <coughs> bit uh, less uh, projects for that time period. And they have to like per each other. So it's not possible that everyone will take a holiday at the same day. So they have to change. And uh, if they leave a company, that happens. But uh, well, that happens in every company, so we have to hire a new one. And we have about uh, five external people who are sometimes cooperating with us, so we can hire these uh, externals. External. Um, it's mostly students or something like that. Uh, how many time uh, uh, per day the team spend for formal procedures like uh, pre planning, planning, uh, uh, demos uh, in, in your vision, and so on? And how many times? Well, it differs. We have uh, three people. One of them is uh, mostly dedicated to the organization and uh, communication with the customer on a higher level and presenting to the customer. So that's a her role. And uh, then we have. Uh, one person who is pretty much new, he is learning and he's doing just development and uh, spending, I don't know, twice 15 minutes per day with filling the burnouts and stuff like that and discussing with maybe it's a little bit more, but it's not much. And the third person is uh, sharing his capacity like half half with the sales activities and the technical. Maybe you can see the general method. For the whole team in general, how many times? Like 10 persons or 15? It depends if you can the sales, uh, the business uh, activities as well, then it would be half and half. Because uh, for the 50%, we are communicating with the customer and going to the new customers and trying to find new customers, and for 50%, we are doing their work. How do you plan to survive on the market when there are lots of advanced content management systems which just offer uh, most part of uh, the effort of your team just out of the box and for a company it's often much cheaper uh, just to train several people and have constant content editors and have as many sites as they want for free almost. Well, do you really, uh, I will repeat the question because it was uh, how we plan to survive on the market when uh, there are some content management systems like uh, Drupal or whatever else which a company can uh, use for free and just train a couple of developers to use them and have as many web presentation as they like. So maybe I will reply by a question. Do you really believe it's for free because you have to pay the time with the developers? Well, but the main effort is at the beginning when you learn this new tool, new CMS, and you train your staff to do this, and you have a dedicated team, and sometimes and sometimes it is uh, enough to uh, hire a <coughs> developer to make the template, as you explained once, and just have the webmasters and content editors mm. already working in your company just to mm. build the content in 
Well, uh, we are a software development company. Uh, I mean, a survey company which I'm working for. We have about 110 people, all the software developers and testers. And uh, we finally didn't find uh, economically reasonable to do our own website. It's always more expensive than if we outsource it. Because we are not really web designers. And all our engineers are trained to do difficult uh, designs and really spend hours creating something which a skilled web studio can do in hours. So. so I don't think so. And finally, um, back to the business strategy of that small company. We believe that uh, we can uh, show the customer that we are better. We have nicer designs. Because if I uh, see the designs on, for example, Drupal, maybe there are some better ones. I'm not really an expert on these things. But uh, if I check uh, <coughs> the templates, user interfaces on Drupal, it's uh, never so nice. and. Uh, it's like, uh, I cannot, not everyone can do the graphical design to be really interesting. So, and that's what happened to all these companies when they are using some open source CMS. They are not experts on the problematics, so they don't know how to do that. <coughs> okay, so if there are not more questions, then I will thank you for attention and uh, if you can...